Every 16-bit gaming system of yesteryear had their own unique bestseller, quite often a platformer as these were some of the most popular games back then. The main two, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, had Mario and Sonic games respectively. Both very very different to each other, yet both awesome in their own ways. So, when others had tons of fun breaking their gamepads playing these iconic titles, don't think that I also didn't. And actually I didn't, as all I had was my old trusty A500. That said, I was not a sad sod, looking enviously at other people's machines, hoping to be invited for a game or two. Hell no, I had my own ace down my own sleeve, and it was no worse than the earlier two. In fact, in some ways it could be considered a superior game. But before we get into any of that juicy Amiga gaming, please hit those like and subscribe buttons below. It's a click here and click there for you, literally a second each, but helps me more than you know. Thanks. In the heavenly year of our lord, 1993, on the Amiga, and a mere year later on PC, widely known developer slash publisher, Team17, of currently mainly Worms fame, released a true gem, an answer to Sonic and Mario that Amiga owners needed and thrived for. And PC owners did not give a damn about as they had Wolfenstein 3D, and while that was not a platformer in any way imaginable, they never gave it a single thought, just going through waves and waves of bodies. Anyway, as I was saying, in 1993, a legend was born. Super Frog. As cringe as it sounds, supered his way into our bedrooms and onto our TV screens. The game leaves you in charge of, well, surprise surprise, a frog. That is, well, super. A once prince turned into a green hero on a mission to save his beloved princess from Alzheimer and dementia-driven hands of each true superheroes of the era, arch-villain, the Mad Witch. And while I can't really tell you what her name was, she no doubt was a witch, and definitely was bad as well. At least judging from an awesome intro by famous Mr. Eric Schwartz that the Amiga version greets the player with. Story aside, as it's obvious that it's not the story that gave Sonic and Mario their deserved fame, Super Frog at the first glance may appear to be a very generic platformer. It's anything but though. The main game is divided into five levels. Forest, castle, circus, pyramids and ice each consisting of four individual stages. There's also a super secret stage. Wait, did I say secret? I meant special, as while it's not overly long, it swaps platforming for horizontal shooting in style aching to R-Type or Project X, as a breath of fresh air before the final challenge. And finally, there's a level of Mud Witches Moon Base, because while regular witches may live in huts somewhere on swamps or in the forest, Mud Witches live on the moon. Game logic for the win. The game ends with a rather disappointing boss fight with said witch, that's actually much easier than the majority of preceding levels in the game, still, it's the voyage not the destination that it's all about, right? Anyway, I've mentioned Mario and Sonic games before, as I'd like to use them as examples, or standards even, that I will compare Super Frog to. It's not an easy task though, having a game match against these two behemoths, but I suppose if there's gotta be one that can challenge them for the title of best platformer, it's Super Frog. What made Mario and Sonic great is what also makes Super Frog an underrated contender that could have been a champion among all three, if given an equally popular platform to debut on, so basically a fighting chance. Both console titles had beautiful graphics, excellent and well thought out level design, lots of collectibles and most importantly, offered tons of fun. So how does our Toadface friend stack against them? I'd say he's got it all too, and more. Both Amiga and PC versions of the game look and play virtually the same. This video's recording is entirely of Amiga's original, however, so while most things said will apply to both, you'll be watching the early outing. Superfrog's graphics literally squeeze out everything that's possible out of vanilla Amigas, keeping a solid 50 FPS at all times with no slowdowns. While most Amiga titles run at 32 colors on screen, Superfrog developers did some Jedi mind fuckery tricks on the code and the game displays 64 at once. How they've done it, I don't know, and frankly I don't care. But it looks stunning, and wouldn't look out of place on any of the 16-bit consoles in the early 90s. But I shouldn't judge the book by its cover, and I shall not judge the games purely by their visuals either. At least not today and not in this video. Sound design and music are also excellent, no interaction on the screen is silent and all seem to be represented by staple platforming beeps and bops, neither of which sound out of place. Toasty! Sega and Super Nintendo's classics are well known for the ingenious level design. Mario's are smartly laid out and often require dipping into the dark side of the force and loads of patience and repetition to memorize and master. And Sonic's are built with speed of gameplay in mind, 
They're more frantic, chaotic and often when Sonic runs he's so fast that between one frame and another I manage to complete a level or two never even noticing when and how. Super Frog is more on the earlier title side with just a few dips here and there into the latter. The stages are vast, huge really, four-way scrolling and filled with many many monsters. Well, quite honestly I don't want to call those cute colorful creatures monsters, but they do seem to be bent on killing so I can't settle just for plain cute either. So cutesters perhaps would be the name? I should probably trademark it while I still can, never mind that though. There are only three rules of survival in Super Frog, or a single free piece rule, depends how you want to approach it. Anyway. If it moves or looks sharp or worst of all you have no clue what it is or does, even if it's cute looking, it will most likely kill you. On top of it all, there are also all around present traps, collectibles and switches used to either remove barriers or turn on or off different machines in the game. You definitely won't get bored here. The absolute highlight of Super Frog however are the hidden areas filled with coins, upgrades and collectibles. In some stages, especially in Castle and Pyramid, there can easily be more than a dozen each. And that means that there may actually be more of this in Super Frog than there were in Fury of the Furries. And whoever knows that title understands that it's not an easy feat to beat. There's also something new introduced in nearly each level, so the game holds your interest all throughout. Super Frog is one of those titles that could be easily described as easy to get into and hard to master. Because while the first few stages are child's play and work as a de facto introduction to the game world, the latter ones quickly get progressively tougher. Perhaps not as difficult as some more modern games like Souls Likes or Jump King are, but definitely more demanding than many other platformers of yesteryear. There are also no warps or saves in Super Frog, so the only way of resuming progression from specific levels are the passcodes. This can be won between stages in the minigame of slots, you don't really have to partake, but given they're the only source of obtaining set codes, it's advisable. At least until you Pokemon the shit out of them, so to put simply, collect them all. Gameplay-wise, Super Frog is stellar. There is a lot to do, find and collect, and there's nearly always plenty enough time to just have a little extra fun looking for those hidden coin caches. And you need the coins as each level exit unlocks after collecting a specific amount. Apart from the very last level, so the one that has its stages on the moon, it seems that the required amounts of coins are not too dramatic and are easily obtainable just by going about your day searching for the exit. But when you do get to that very last four stages, you gotta make sure to pick every single one of those shiny bad boys you can lay your eyes on, as often there are just about as many as you need to exit, and not always in plain view. So keep that in mind. Your super frog would just be a frog really, if not for the super bit though. So the game offers upgrades and you can find them all over the place to make you just that little extra. There are different and many. Starting with green pellets that are used as sort of bullet yo-yo like projectile to throw at enemies. It doesn't kill them all, but those that it does are usually the most annoying ones or placed in difficult spots. There are wings too, and they allow our green body to glide down slower and even fly horizontally for a short while. They may not seem like much of improvement initially when you get it, but later on you'll find use for them when going over long patches of spikes or when trying to get to that hidden far off bonus area. There is also a red pellet, a matrix like red pill after taking which you become invisible and appear on the screen as a pair of big eyes. It's kind of invincibility against all monsters and their attacks, but jumping on spikes can still end our green hero's life, so beware. Orange bottle is Lucasate Orange, my favorite flavor of it coincidentally. An obvious product placement that refills your HP points like all good in-game placed products do. You have 4 of these HP points for each of your lives, meaning you can take 4 hits, but the 5th one is the one that leads you straight to the light. And you wanna avoid following that shiny beautiful tempting light as much as possible, cause when you die, you lose all upgrades, not just one of your froggy lives. Anyway, there's obviously more pickups like extra lives, speed ups and downs, but frankly all that's best left for you to discover. It's very difficult to summarize Super Frog, to depict it as awesome as it really was. As it still is, actually. So I'm afraid that you're just going to have to take my word for it. And if that's not enough, then maybe the gameplay running in the background of me yapping struck your interest. Well, one way or another, if you give it a shot, I'm sure you'll quickly find that Super Frog is a unique and challenging game that very easily could have been Amiga's answer to Mario and Sonic if only the platform it was released on was half as widespread as both 16-bit consoles were. Sadly, while being moderately successful on the Amiga and a bit less so on PC, 
Super Frog never reached the heights or attention it deserved and ended up being a hugely underrated title that both history and gamers forgot about. If things were different, I may have been talking about Super Frog 3 or 4 here, but they aren't, and we'll never know what could have been, as it never got a chance to spread its wings. In the end, I love the game, and it's one of my most favorite platformers, so I cannot give it any lower score than 9 out of 10. On a side note, there was also a Steam remake released in 2000s, but it's heavily modified and botched the game, so it's not worth your time. So avoid that at all cost and seek out either original Amiga or classic PC port of it. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you liked the video and remember Super Frog as fondly as I do. If you did, please hit those like and subscribe buttons below. And if you're in a specially generous mood, you may even consider joining my Patreon or a small donation. Details are in the description below. For me, however, this is all, so have a good one and I'll see you next time. Thank you.